Hello everyone, Tokyo here. Let's check out the latest AAA sensation. Village is the newest installment in the Resident Evil series, which picks up the story after Resident Evil 7 and we will once again play as Ethan Winters. Now, Ethan is not like the other Resident Evil main characters, he's not a police officer, a special task force operative or a trained military soldier, so understandably people was puzzled why he is the protagonist of the story, but he actually quickly became the fan favorite. He's charismatic, resilient, determined, down to earth, someone you can resonate with, and he's almost like a clean slate for the players. So to understand Ethan and his journey, we have to reference back to his endeavors in Biohazard. This could be tricky for those who didn't play it, as a lot has happened there that has now an effect on the current events. Village's story could be easily told in a sentence. Mia and Ethan were relocated to a safe house in Romania, had a child, Rose, who got kidnapped, and Ethan went to save her from the scary Mother Miranda, who wanted to revive her long-lost daughter using baby Rose. But the situation is not that simple. Actually, the story is really good in my opinion, and there's a lot more detail and mystery to uncover. Oh, by the way, the game starts with a quick recap of RE7, so you could be up to date in case you forgot it or didn't play at all. So, as I mentioned, Ethan and Mia were moved to Romania after they were rescued from the Baker house by Chris Redfield and his team. It's been three years since the unfortunate events in Louisiana and they now have a pretty big-headed few months old baby named Rosemary Winters. One night at dinner, Chris and his team shot Mia, killing her and taking Rose away. The story is paced and framed to hide the true motives of the main villain and our most important side character, Chris, until the end and only focuses on Ethan, who awakes in the forest after the track transporting them got in an accident. Also, probably it is the most reasonable part to critic, as Chris could simply tell Ethan what the fuck is going on, and that would save a lot of headaches. But unfortunately that didn't happen. Now, I could tell the story as it happened in the game, but I will not do that exactly. If you are watching this part, either you already know it, or have no intention to play it, so you don't mind spoilers. Instead, I will try to make sense of it from the start. Let's give it a try. Yes, Chris and his team shot Mia Winters, the wife of our protagonist, but they had a clear intention. It was actually the main villain Mother Miranda shapeshifted as Mia and planned to take Rose away when she got shot. Side note, at this point the real Mia was already rotting in a cell. While transporting Ethan, dead Mia aka Mother Miranda and Rose, Mother Miranda revived, caused the truck to crash and took Rose away. This is where Ethan wakes up and starts his journey to the village nearby. Now, who is Mother Miranda and why is she the antagonist? As it turned out, she is more than 100 years old. Dr. Miranda and her daughter Ava lived in the early 20th century, when the Spanish flu devastated the population and killed Ava, who was just 10 years old at that time. In her despair, Miranda wandered to a nearby cave to actually end her life, but instead discovered an organism called the Magmycid, the source of the mold from the previous game. This Magmycid contained the consciousness of those whom it absorbed, and Miranda believed it is also contained the consciousness of Eva. This is where she started to experiment with the Magmycid to revive her daughter, but it also required a suitable host. During her experiments, she developed a parasite called the Kadu, which means gift in Romanian, and she started to infest the population with it. In most cases, the result was death, but some of them turned into aggressive mindless monsters, the lichens, and a few could even retain their consciousness, mutating and developing superhuman abilities. They became her children, the lords of the region representing the four houses. At some point a man arrived to the village and was fascinated with Mother Miranda's work and became her apprentice. This man's name was Oswell E. Spencer, who later co-founded a pretty infamous pharmaceutical company called Umbrella. A few years later, a crime organization, The Connections, approached Miranda, who gave them Eva's DNA and the mold. This led to the birth of Evelyn, a bioweapon, who was the main antagonist of the previous game. Now we established the backstory of the villains and the village, so let's get back to Ethan. 
After the track crashed and he managed to find his way into the village, he quickly discovered that the whole place is empty, villagers are missing, instead it is full of lichens. Eventually he reaches a huge castle overlooking the whole village, but quickly got discovered and captured by one of the four lords Heisenberg. This is when Ethan first meets Mother Miranda and the head of the houses Karl Heisenberg, Asina Dimitrescu, Dona Beneviento and Salvatore Moro. There were several ethnicities living in Romania throughout the centuries. It is interesting to see these Romanian, German, French and an Italian surname. So regarding the four lords, the castle was owned and is owned by the Dimitrescu family and now in the possession of Alcina. It has a very feudal feel to it, big ass castle in the hills and the village with the peasants at its feet. Everyone calls Alcina the big sexy vampire lady, but she's actually not a vampire. Due to a hereditary blood disease, upon mutated with the Kadu, she became dependent on human blood and flesh. Although the whole setup with the blood sucking woman and the big castle in the Romanian countryside feeds to the vampire mythology. The next lord is Dona Beneviento, the daughter of a doll maker. She was the only child of the noble Beneviento family who spent her time in the company of her most loved doll Angie. After her parents died, she was taken care of by family servants. She felt really happy in a long time when she was approached by Mother Miranda. I feel like her story is the most heartbreaking. I felt sorry for her as she just seemed like a little girl who didn't want to be alone. The third lord is Salvatore Moro, who is very dull and boring, he's just an overly mutated idiot, and basically he's living in the reservoir and experimented with the kadu and turned villagers into lichens and such. His mutation allowed him to turn into a huge fish. The last lord is Karl Heisenberg, who is basically a rogue agent. He hates Mother Miranda for what she did to him, infecting and mutating with the Kadu, despite that made him really, really powerful, able to control electricity in his body, discharging it or creating magnetic fields and moving metal objects. Heisenberg lives in a factory of horrors full of abominations he created for his rebellion. Eventually, of course, you kill all of them as you progress through the game. And this is where you first face Mother Miranda, for a cutscene at least. And, well, you die as she rips off your heart. But this is where the twist comes in. While Ethan is supposedly lying lifelessly, he is contacted by Evelyn in his dreams or God knows where and how. She just laughs at him and explains to him that he has been dead for three years now. Actually, in Resident Evil 7, at the beginning, where Ethan finds Mia and confronted with Jack Baker, Jack hits him in the head. It looked like then and there Ethan was just knocked out, but in reality it killed him and the mold revived his dead body. So it happens here again. Ethan is revived, he's made of mold and he knows that his days are numbered regardless. One last act to save his daughter. Meanwhile, Chris and his elite team goes after Mother Miranda, but while he advances forward, a couple of aircrafts arrive. The BSAA, aka Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance, sends additional teams to handle the situation, but they only agitated the Megami seat, which now erected a wall around Miranda. As Chris tries to get closer, he founds the route and places a detonation charge in it. Moving even closer, he eventually finds Mother Miranda's lab and a lot of answers. Not only that, but he also finds the real and very alive Mia in a cell. Mother Miranda tries to revive Ava, but ultimately falls. She revives the baby, but it isn't her long lost daughter. She was reborn as Rose. Ethan rushes to save her and eventually killing Miranda. With not much time left, Ethan makes the ultimate sacrifice. He knows he will not live much longer, so he gives Rose and his jacket and his wedding ring to Chris and takes the detonator to blow up the Magami seat along with himself. Chris takes Rose and Mia to one of the BSAA aircraft and leaves the site. The detonation shakes the plane and this is when Mia learns what happened to Ethan. 
Airborne, one of Chris's squad mates, discovers a dead BSA soldier who turns out to be a bioweapon. This shocks the team and Chris orders to return to the BSA European HQ. The BSA was originally privately founded and later taken over by the UN to assist with bioterrorist attacks. Their involvement came into picture when a blue umbrella requested their help to check out the Baker family in Tulvi Parish, Louisiana, which led to the rescue of Ethan and Mia in Resident Evil 7. In the after credit, we see Teen Rose visiting her father's grave when a black car and the shady suites request her presence. I assume he was a BSA agent and Rose is now working with them. Capcom actually mentioned, or maybe it was a leak, but regarding this, some information circulates the net that it will be a Winter's trilogy, so it is safe to assume in the next chapter we will play as Rose, probably, which would be very interesting as Rose is not just an ordinary human, but possesses several unknown and natural abilities. The gameplay itself is very similar to Resident Evil 7 or to the RE2 free reworks. I would say there are no major improvements. You play in first person mode again, which works really well. I have to say, both FPS and TPS works well in these Resident Evil games. The game itself is very linear, but I actually always loved how Resident Evil games handles it. Instead of going forward every time into a new territory or map, you keep circling back. You obtain new items, keys, which unlocks new parts of the map. It gives a sensible adventure and progress. You have your basic knife, which is not really a viable weapon due to the enemies are relatively tough, so you mainly use it to open boxes and stuff. Good thing though that you don't have to keep it on a keybind, the game automatically lets you use it on a box. Rest of the weapons could be categorized as pistols, shotguns, snipers and explosives. You also have a grenade launcher, which lets you change between explosive and blinding grenades. If you played the remastered Resident Evils, you are familiar with it. For explosive, you have a landmine and a pipe bomb. They do a lot of damage, but the throw distance for the pipe bomb is ridiculous. Ethan throws like a fourth grade girl who hates PE. Your ultimate weapon is a magnum, which does a shit ton of damage, but ammo is rare to come by, so better not to waste it. At some point you meet an interesting character called the Duke. He is actually a shopkeeper and has an upgrade system integrated in it. Duke also present in most, if not all the safe rooms, and you can always save the game next to him, but there are safe points apart from that. It makes the safe rooms cozy, listening to his yawning, moaning, munching. Something magical about that, when it blasts through your open headset into the space, raising eyebrows if you happen to share it with one or more individuals. Just close your eyes and enjoy. Yuki is also someone that is unique to this entry because in previous titles there was no one in the safe room. There were a safe room music that you can chill to, but now there's a person there who will comfort you potentially and give you some ease of mind. In my opinion, this takes away the tension. So Duke has several other menu points you can buy and sell, of course, him being a merchant, and you can upgrade and cook. That's right, enhancing your defensive abilities can be done by having a nice Romanian meal. In order to do that you have to kill poultry, fish, etc. and bring them back to Duke so he can cook it for you. There is also a basic crafting system, you gather materials and based on a receipt, some of them you have to buy, you can craft ammo, healing elixirs or explosives. The currency of the game is the Romanian lei. I had hoped this game would take place before 2005, so we could run around with hundreds of millions of lei and buy a Dacia just to pop the tires after the first 10 meters, but unfortunately it takes place in current time. You mainly earn lei 
by selling valuable items, treasures to Duke. This is a process that I really enjoyed. These items are hidden in cool places, often guarded by some simple puzzle. Being an Ari game, it obviously has puzzles, but I don't want to waste my time on them. They are not that hard, unfortunately. Apart from puzzles, there are more deadly and horrifying creatures lurking around and trying to hunt you down. There is a good variety of enemies, from foot soldiers to big hairy dogs, giant tanky guys and flying stuff, gargoyles or something. In the previous game, they had these mod creatures to dodge your shots when you have them in your sight. They kept this mechanic but upgraded it. Enemies swing wide to the side and do it more frequently, making it more annoying to shoot them in the face. Point blank shotgun blast usually does the trick though. Each part of the game has its different enemy types, which is really cool. In the village you mainly face lichens and undeads rising from the ground. In the Dimitrescu castle you face the daughters of the lady, they serve as miniboss battles. Also there is a Mr. X-like chase sequence with the big vampire lady sex symbol and in the dungeon there are some creepy hooded sisters. Yeah, fuck that part. Probably my favorite part was the Beneviento estate. There are no enemies there, only a chase part with a giant fetus. But it heavily relies on atmosphere and psychological horror and it delivers big time. Actually in my opinion this part is the scariest of the game. As I mentioned the reservoir was a pretty boring part. You just keep dodging Moro, solving mini puzzles on the go so you can drain the water and ultimately do the boss fight. At Heisenberg's factory you face some unique enemies, creations of the Lord, ex-villagers with drill hands, jets on their back, or straight out half a plane as their upper body. It actually reminded me of Silent Hill games, and it is a really creepy part. Speaking of creepy, as it is a horror game it happens to be scary, but unfortunately not as scary as the previous entry. What I like about the Resident Evil games that they operate with tension and heavy atmosphere. Obviously, there are a few jump scares who doesn't actually like to scream into the night, but I could count them on one hand. There was an article with the producer of the game and they mentioned they got several feedback about the previous game being too scary. And you can actually notice here how much it was toned down. I really hope that they get an equal amount of feedback about the game not being that scary and they will dial back to the previous amount in the next title. Also, the game itself is not that hard to beat. The initial difficulty has three options, casual, normal and hard, and after the first playthrough you unlock Village of Shadows. I did not play Village of Shadows yet, but as I saw it's just your typical RE difficulty where the enemies get more tanky, they basically become bullet sponges. But no new enemy types, puzzles, maybe fewer materials and ammo, but you still can do the same treasures, which gives you a lot of money to spend. So let me start with the sound and music. Sound is really good and immersive. I like how it is constructed, however the music is nothing special in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, it is good, but not noteworthy tracks like in previous games. I always thought of the safe room music that it is something iconic to the even entry. Well, if you count Duke sniffing and barfing, this one is pretty unique I guess. The graphics however is excellent. We already saw the potential of the RE engine from previous games, so it is not a surprise. The art team really did wonders on every asset of the map. As someone who went to Transylvania multiple times, it was cool to see how appropriate the setting was. I'm pretty sure I saw the same cloth table that was sold at the street side merchant. So the assets are on point, the graphics, art, atmosphere as well. Settings wise, you can choose from a wide variety of options. The game supports HDR and ray tracing alike. However, there is no option for DLSS for Nvidia users, so they will see the same ish impact on their GPU if they decide to turn it on. I ran this game on an RX 6800 XT paired with a 3700X CPU, so a full AMD system. Everything turned to max, ray tracing high, FPS average between 60 and 90, depending on the location. Regarding ray tracing, one could argue its implementation in this title. To be completely honest, there were only a handful of locations where I checked the non-ray traced visuals out of curiosity and I could tell the difference. 
Most of the time ray tracing off just looks as good as ray tracing on. If I had to choose between HDR or ray tracing here, I would go with HDR as it objectively really looked better. Regardless, if your monitor supports HDR, you can turn both on for some nice eye candy. For ray traced reflections, there's not many places that utilizes it. It is not control, but for shadows and light, it is more noticeable. Also, if you have the option, you can turn FreeSync Premium Pro on, as the game supports it. My final verdict is a solid 8 out of 10. Resident Evil Village is an awesome game, but not really the horror game I was hoping for. It is a melting pot of what Capcom did right in the previous entries, but also fails to move the series forward. I really wish the next RE will add the survivor horror feel back. Anyways, don't forget to comment, like and sub. Thank you all for watching, see you next time.